DJ, and this is Native Reds Media, your place for opinionated tech news, reviews, and entertaining. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Main Gear Vector Pro 2 laptop. Uh, I purchased this from Micro Center. They do the in-house servicing on this laptop. You can purchase it on Amazon as well or eBay, but I got mine from the local Micro Center. I'll be going over what comes in the box. I'll be going over the tech specs, look and feel, and my overall opinion of this laptop. I'll probably make this like a two-part review because there's a lot of things that I wanted to go over and I don't want to feel like I'm cramming everything into one video. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this review. And first we'll start off by going over what comes in the box here. So this is the main gear box. This is for the Vector Pro 2. This is the 15.6 inch version. Uh, white box, have the main gear logo on the top. You're then met with the laptop, usually it's sitting right there, but uh, it is in a protective covering. And then below it, you have your power brick and then you have your documentation. And that's pretty much it. So let me get this thing closed up. And with that being said, I'm just gonna jump right into the tech specs on this. I have upgraded a couple things since I've gotten this, but uh, I'll go over that since I've gotten it, is it gotten or is it got? But anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, let me get, jump right into these tech specs. Of course, this is a 15.6 inch quad HD. That's 1440p panel. It supports uh, 240 hertz on the refresh rate. The CPU in here is a 6900HX processor by AMD. That's eight core, 16 thread. The RAM is 32 gigabytes of DDR5. That is uh, two times 16 gigabytes there, and that's 4,800 megahertz on speed. The GPU is an NVIDIA 3070 Ti, a gigabyte version. There is a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It's Gen 4. I upgraded mine by putting in a secondary one terabyte NVMe. It's just a Western Digital Blue. It's one that I use and I keep all my games installed on it. Uh, opening this thing up, fairly simple. I think 10 to 11 screws on the back, pop it off. Uh, you have your two RAM slots that are uh, stacked. You just slide that uh, secondary NVMe in there. You have your Wi-Fi card. You can upgrade that. And you have the two NVMe slots where you can uh, install your own NVMe into the second slot there. And continuing on, you have Windows 11 Pro installed. You have Wi-Fi 6 individually lit RGB keys. So it is an opto mechanical keyboard. So they are mechanical and I'll go over that a little bit later. It has a 93.48 watt hour battery, a 230 watt AC power adapter. You got your headphone and mic jack, of course. You got a FHD, which is a 1080p webcam. Uh, this has 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C uh, ports on the back. Well, I guess not ports, but a port on the back. And I'll go over the ports here in a second. HDMI 2.1 out, so that is 4K up to 120 hertz. And I think it's 8-bit. A full SD card reader and 2.5 gigabytes per second uh, on the ethernet. And now we're gonna get into the look and feel. We're gonna start off by going over the ports. I'm gonna make my way to the right side here. You have that full SD card reader. It is UHS-1, uh, that's the speeds there. So up to 100 megs per second, I believe. So um, not super fast, not super so slow. It gets the job done when you need it on the go. You have two, let me move that, that's my mouse plug there. You got two USB a ports here next to the uh, SD card and they are 3.1 Gen 1 speeds on this side, on the right side. You got your air vent and then making your way to the back, you have a USB-C port and that is 3.1 Gen 2 speeds there. You got your HDMI 2.1 Port there. You got your RJ45 jack for your 2.5 gigabytes per second of speeds. You got your barrel plug for your power. And then flanking those ports, you have your two exhaust vents, of course. And then we're going to make our way to the left side and you have your Kensington lock, your uh, left side exhaust vent. You have a 3.1 Gen 2 USB-A port and you have your mic and headphone jack right up front. And that is it when it comes to the ports on this. Decent amount of ports, uh, not bad. I like that they put 
the majority of the big bulky stuff on the back, your HDMI, your USB-C, and your barrel plug, things like that, if you're gonna be hooking up um, external monitors. Oh, and that USB-C on the back, it does support um, DisplayPort 1.4 out. All right, and continuing on, the back plate is a magnesium alloy, so that is metal, and that is also on the decking here. So while gaming, this does get a little bit warm when the CPU and GPU start to heat up. I guess that's a good thing because it spreads some of that heat uh, out a little bit better when uh, it goes through the deck. It's not something that's super hot, but you do feel it a little bit uh, getting warm on this metal decking here. And also because this decking is metal, uh, I, when I had it in my bag, I kind of dinged up the corner here. So I set my bag down pretty hard when it was in my laptop bag uh, and for some reason I don't know that I guess there wasn't enough cushion but I'm gonna put something down there it dinged the corner up on here and put a little bit of uh, a gas there so that's something I'm gonna have to look into and make sure that I protect it on my laptop bag I'm not gonna bl I'm not gonna blame the laptop for that I'll blame my bag for that one and then looking at the trackpad here it is a glass trackpad it's not super huge but it does have a quick toggle function if you tap the top left side it will turn the trackpad off for gaming and if you tap it again twice, it will turn it back on. So tap twice, turn off, tap twice again, it will turn it back on, which is pretty good so you don't have to go in and fiddle around with any settings there, it just turns it off and on. It is very smooth to the touch and it is tactile when clicking the left and right side. And from there, making our way up, you see the Opto mechanical keyboard here. And of course, all of these keys are individually RGB lit, so I can go into the software and I can tune the settings, I can change the light settings on each of these keys if I like. I can customize it. Uh, I can go in and make the key keyboards uh, breathe a little bit. I can do rainbow RGB. I can do raindrops if I like, and I can tune the colors to the raindrops and to all the settings. And you know, there's the marquee uh, setting where you can have each one go and the color just fades throughout and you can uh, adjust the speeds and you can save it to the BIOS to where wherever you, whenever you start the laptop up, it will revert back to the setting that you have saved. I pretty much just keep it on a solid color here. So click on that paint bucket, keep it on a solid color. You do have, um, I think four different brightness levels that you can set it to. And uh, if you have the num lock set up in the settings from the control center, you can just hit the F7 or F6 button on here to brighten it and turn the keyboard up and up and down as far as the uh, lighting settings and turn it off. Now the feel of this keyboard when typing feels pretty good to me. I actually prefer mechanical keyboards so this to me feels good. The throw on this isn't as deep as some other mechanical keyboards. This one I think is 1.5 millimeters. Some of the other ones are more closer to 1.9 and that's some of the throw when you're looking at the Lenovo Legion 5's keys and, and I think even on the Asus Tough A15 and the Asus ROG Strix that I had. Uh, they had a little bit more throw it seemed like but I like this keyboard. It after typing on it for a few minutes, you get used to it. These are uh, pretty big standard size keys. This keyboard isn't shrunk down too much. The arrow keys are kind of jammed up in there and this does have a numpad. So it takes the full takes up the full width of the uh, frame and the decking here, but it's, it's nice and big and it's uh, fairly bright, especially when the lights are dim around you and you have it on the brightest settings. You have no issues seeing all of the F functions with the secondary functions right below them. They kind of illuminate as well, so that helps you to see uh, when it's dark. And I'm gonna get quiet right now and try to type on this keyboard so you can kind of hear it. So it is tactile and the mic is about what three feet away from this keyboard so not super loud but if you're in a quiet setting yeah you might annoy your neighbors if you're a pretty fast typer and then making our way above the keyboard you have a, a vent here it does get a little bit hot to the touch when gaming but it's nothing to write home to mom about uh, it's not gonna burn your hands or anything but uh, of course just up under that in the center of the keyboard that's where the CPU and some of those exhaust gases do come out of there so you can feel that when gaming a little bit and then to the right of that that is your performance control 
toggle there right uh, next to the power switch there uh, you have balanced you have enthusiast and over boost if you hit that the balance mode on this one it's low quiet you can go into the settings and tone that down even further if you like it to be a little bit more quiet basically fans completely off you can uh, set your uh, TDP on the CPU to be a little bit lower as well uh, and adjust your fan curves then the next one up which is performance or uh, enthusiast that's more for uh, that's where I keep it at for gaming and then the next one up is the over boost and that's where it kind of puts all of your settings TDP for your CPU GPU on its max settings and you can boost uh, your CPU and GPU up a little bit it gets a little bit more hotter a little bit more loud and so I keep it on the middle of the road setting there while gaming now one thing to note with the main gear it comes with the node controller control center I don't have that installed I actually have the XMG's controller or control center installed it's a little bit more I'm not gonna say intuitive but it has a, a, a few more features that the main gears no controller doesn't have like if you go into the general settings the GPU settings it actually has it to where it'll tell you if your GPU is sleep or awake the dedicated GPU the 3070 Ti that's installed in here when you are on battery and you're not gaming you want that to be sleep because it will extend your battery time and I can go in there and I can toggle and I can quickly see oh yeah my my GPU it's asleep it's not running and my battery life will extend uh, so if the main GPU that dedicated 3070 Ti is on you're probably going to get maybe two hours of life with this with the screen at 80% but if you see that main GPU is asleep you have that screen at 80% it extends the battery life and I've been able to get upwards of six and a half seven plus hours without any issues on this laptop right now I actually have the Nvidia Optimus turned off so it's only going to run on the dedicated GPU because uh, you can do that you have to switch it off and then you have to reboot the computer and then the dedicated GPU and I, I have it on that so uh, because I've been testing games but uh, with that right now the battery at 87% it's saying I have about three hours and 16 minutes of battery life left that's the estimated amount uh, depending on what I'm doing if I'm watching videos and doing things like that it'll kind of decline a little bit so that's pretty cool that you can do that in this laptop and then one of the other things that I like about this XMG's controller is the performance settings going into the custom profiles. You have a few more custom profiles in this and uh, where you can go in and change the sustained power limit, the boost power limit and things like that for the CPU. You can set the GPU temperature target. You can do some of these things in the node controller. This one. Uh, it's just a little bit different and you can go a little bit more in depth when tuning your CPU and GPU for gaming and heat. And so that's something that I'll uh, kind of go over right before I do the gaming benchmarks. And then next up, you have the screen just above all that. The screen does get decently bright, I think. I searched and I searched. If you go to the main gear website, it's not going to say much about the screen. It just says 1080 or 1440p and 240 hertz but I searched and saw on I think it was a foreign website because this is a Tong Feng chassis a lot of these computers use the same screen that same 1440p 240 hertz and it is 97% sRGB uh, around uh, just above 72 73% on the uh, DCI-P3 color gamut and the uh, uh, Adobe RGB they're in the 70s or so so not bad when it comes to color accuracy uh, of course 240 Hertz and when you disconnect the battery I have a setting in the XMG control center to where it will go from the 240 Hertz down to 60 uh, FPS to well not FPS but but Hertz to uh, save a little bit on the battery when disconnecting this laptop and then once you connect the power back to this it will bump back up to that 240 hertz so you can get smooth scrolling and things when you're browsing the internet and looking on YouTube and then just above the screen there you got that 1080p webcam there and I'll show you a sample of that coming from here with the internal mic 
And this is the 1080p camera on the Vector Pro 2. The sound you're hearing is also coming from the Vector Pro 2's inbuilt microphone as well. How does it look and how does it sound? And then with this laptop, the screen does open up a decent amount. I think that's what, about 130 degrees, 135 degrees of opening. It doesn't go flat like some of the Lenovo Legion laptops do, but it opens up wide enough. So if you have it in the laptop stand, you can get a straight up and down look on the laptop there. It, uh, has a nice smooth mechanism for the hinge it uh, if you kind of close it a little bit and it'll sit there it does have slight screen wobble but nothing horrible uh, there's a HP Omen uh, the, I don't know if it was a 16 inch or whatever it was but when you open that it would just sit there and shake and shake and shake this isn't too bad it does have a little bit of screen wobble but nothing terrible and because the decking on here is metal and it, it does have a little bit of weight on it i, I believe this is like 4.8 pounds which not too bad uh when typing if you are uh zooming or in meets you will see a little bit of screen wobble and now i'm going to get into the gaming benchmarks one thing to note in the xmg controller you can set the cpu's thermal limit and power limit. You can do the same for the GPU, but not so much uh, the power limit on the GPU. You can set the boost power and things like that, the dynamic boost, or you can set the uh, boost uh, slider to give it a little bit more wattage. But I just thermal limit the GPU a little bit to 85C. Uh, I thermal limit my CPU to 90C. So if you ever see in my benchmarks that it's hitting there, it's not going above, that's because I have it thermal, thermally limited. Uh, I think, it, you know, for laptops, most of them that I've had, that's where they're gonna go. They pay. Uh, these things are thin and light, so having a GPU hit 90C or a, 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 yeah, GPU or the CPU, the GPU 80 something C, not CPU 90C, it's not a huge deal. They're made to be able to go up to those temperatures, but I still want to prolong the life of my CPU and GPU in these laptops as much as I can. So I kind of thermal limited, thermal limit them a little bit so that I can uh, still game with acceptable frames on this 1440p panel, but still have adequate uh, cooling. This thing obviously is not a raw Strix where it's super beefy and has a big butt on here where they can put more cooling fins and things like that. So yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a limitation, but you can, if you want, just unlock it, put all the sliders to the right side and just let it rip. But uh, in my testing, I did not do that. Uh, so that is one thing to note when you are looking at those frames, you probably can get a few more. And I'm going to test this with Nvidia, the Optimus off. So it's just gonna be running off the dedicated GPU to get a couple more frames there.
entering safe area. Portable electronic device detected. Gas inbound. Safe zone relocated. Hostile UAV overhead. Take 
now. I need to get this under control. And then we're coming up on my conclusion of this laptop here. I believe it's a pretty decent laptop, especially for the price that I got it. And that's what I wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, this laptop goes for about $2,500 MSRP. So uh, that's not cheap at all. But when you look into the specs of this, 3070 Ti, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, uh, 6900HX processor, those are high level, high end specs especially for a laptop. I only paid $825 for this from Micro Center open box. It came with everything. Everything was still sealed. Basically, someone bought this laptop. They didn't like something about it and they just closed it up, put it back in the box and I had my pick of the litter. And for me, going from the laptop that I paid, which was the Asus ROG Strix, I had that one. I didn't put a review up on that. I had it for about a week and then this one went on sale. When I got the Strix, this was $200 more than that. Then this one came out and came about and I was like, all right, I'm gonna jump on it. And I saved 300 bucks. So I was able to get the accidental damage protection from Micro Center for this laptop, along with saving another hundred and so dollars and so it was a steal to get double the performance for less money and have the ADP, the accidental damage protection that Micro Center offers. So if I drop this, break the screen, they're going to take it in, get me a new one or fix the screen, do something like that without any issues. Um, so one thing that I did gloss over is the speaker. <laughs> that was one of the negatives in this laptop. The speakers in this laptop, I'll play an example. They're, they're, they're not great. They right out the box, horrible. Uh, but you would want to get the equalizer APO. I don't know if you know what that is. I'll try to put a link. If I remember in the description, you download equalizer APO, install it, install it for the scenery audio. I think it's scenery or scenery audio on here. It's not real tech for some reason. Some of them have that. Uh, and that could be why the speakers don't sound that good, <laughs> but you just, equalize it. I'll try to put my settings up on the screen as well so you can kind of see what I did. I had to boost the lows a little bit, boost the highs, put a little dip in the mids because this basically was all mids, no lows, no highs. And like I said, it sounded bad. Once I did that, it opened things up. It got a little bit louder because you can boost uh, on that equalizer, you can boost the preamp and that's it. Set it, forget it. You don't have to do anything else. Once you turn the laptop off on, doesn't matter. That equalizer setting will be in the laptop it's kind of like in the bios at that point in time it's really not but equalizer just runs indiscreetly in the background and this it makes it sound so much better so if you have this laptop or one like one like it or any laptop and you don't like the speakers on them get equalizer apo tune your laptop to the sound that you like you be thankful for that. Uh, you can also go on to the Microsoft website and get, uh, what is that, the Dolby app as well. And you can tweak that through the Dolby app, but that costs 14 bucks. Equalize APO free.
And other than that, there was nothing really that stood out to me that I really disliked about this laptop. Overall, for the price that I paid for this and the specs that I got, I'm more than happy and I'll probably settle on this for about a year or so until the next ones come out and the prices get reduced on the next generations with the what the 40 uh, series there, the 4080s, 4090s, things like that. And I'll probably jump on one of those if main gear upgrades to those. And if you have any questions about this laptop, please comment down below. I'll do a second part in the series going over the XMG control center, uh, not the node controller, node controller, XMG, I think this vapor aftershock, there's so many different manufacturers that are well the manufacturers tong thing but uh, so many resellers that re you know rebranded sell their own version of this laptop that all the control centers kind of work with each other xmgs is what i found so far that works the greatest and i'll kind of go over that if you need i didn't see too many reviews of the 15.6 inch version of the laptop if you look at them you're going to see a lot of them are in the 17 inch chassis it is not as thick as this, so it kind of runs a little bit more hot than this one. So that's one thing uh, to note if you're looking into the 15.6 inch version of this. It runs a little bit cooler. It's a little bit more thick. I think this is maybe an inch thick when closed, if that. So still not bad considering uh, it's a little bit cooler and it, you know, fingerprints don't stick to it too much uh, because of the metal. And if you get fingerprints on here, microfiber cloth, right, wipe it off and you'll be fine. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm rambling now. You guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for watching this video. Peace out.